Hey everyone, welcome back to Fleet Yard's Mission Briefing. As always, I'm Captain Foley. And I am Connor Hawkins. And today we're looking at another fantastic ship from this multiverse of sci-fi franchises out there. Um, and we've got some fantastic renders to look at, as always, done by Samuel himself down there. Always does great work, and it's fun seeing all the stuff he has to offer. So thank you very much, Samuel, first oh, of all. No, well, we um, don't want to use you know, screen caps. We want to use high res, 1080p, full detail. I mean, these are some, a lot, most of them are fan models. That's, that's fair. But proper detail stuff for you guys. So we really get in the nitty gritty. That's what we do here. Exactly. Um, and don't forget, guys, we do have a Patreon so that you can see full Fleet Yards episodes. The mission briefings are just, you know, to discuss the, the, the finer points of the ship, you know, as we see them first time, get our take on them. Mostly your first them take. <laughs> some, mostly my first take, yeah. but uh, compare them to other sci-fi franchises yeah. and things we've, we've seen before. But the full episodes, guys, of Fleet Yards are fantastic. We go into all the details on the ship. we got some great animations and renders done Custom by Samuel. Made. And comparing and, to Trek. That's the fun thing. You get the scale right, you see these ships yes. together. It's really interesting. So if you can, click the link to the Patreon below and contribute and maybe... Get some more Fleet Yards episodes out there. There's a few full ones done already, yes. but more planned. So, Anyway, this week, Commander, what are we looking at? Stuart, have you seen the phenomenal movie Starship Troopers? Of course I have. Many times, many times. Amazing movie. Well, I love almost everything in that movie. Today we're going to look at the Roger Young, the ship that they go and fight the bugs in. Um, yes. And we've got some renders, but some basic background information. This is the Roger Young. It's meant to be the 176th ship. It's a Corvette transport. Mm. And what I like about the Starship Trooper universe personally is that it's very realistic in this, obviously fighting aliens, but they haven't got laser. Second one they have, but ignore that. Everyone does. They haven't got laser beams. It's all guns. It's all rockets. It's all very simple tech. This is like a man's man starship, in my opinion. Although it does have fast and light. That's the only exception we have to get to different places. Um, mm. And the point of the ship was to, as we saw in the movie, ferry troops. Because this was the war, guys. Big, yeah. big war. Um, and it's meant to only be able to carry a single platoon of troops. That's why it's a small size. at 550 meters. That's the number I'm finding, which is a pretty... Pretty big ship, in my opinion. Pretty substantial ship, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's bigger than the uh, bigger than the not bigger than the E E or the D, but uh, you know, pretty pretty meaty size. And I got to point out too, the ship was named after Roger Wilton Young, a private who posthumously earned the Medal of Honor in the Pacific Theater of World War II. Got to say that because that's important. Honor the the heroes from the past. So, all right, let's take a first look at the ship, and uh, well, not a first look, but at well, your first render. Yes. Now take us back, Stuart. The the CG I think of Star Trek is I think still incredible because the physical miniatures. Do you remember what you thought when you first saw this movie? What the ships? Or did they make no impression? I mean, it didn't really make an impression on me. They were just ships to get them where they okay. needed to go. Um, and mm. as with most sci-fi, it's it's I find they're very much they're very utilitarian and purpose built. Like, yes. They they serve their purpose well. Yes. And this is very much just a battleship in space for me. Um, I agree completely. Yes. <laughs> so it didn't make much of an impression on you either? Oh, no, it did. I mean, the, the impression part, oh. it did. That's why I picked it as number three. Um, third episode. No. I mean, yeah, you have you have sort of different styles of, of, of spaceships. Do you either go quite radical or that sort of long battleship motif, like Halo mm -hmm. and like this? That's what I associate with this sort of very simple... Like, so utilitarian is a great way, but it's how you approach that design. Having those four engines in the back, having that big, um, you know, there's that, uh, what well, you can see, there's a um, sort of deflector dish uh, you know, sensor thing in the middle. They've got the big bridge at the top. I mean, it's very like an aircraft carrier, but in space. I like how functional it is, and, and, and they've got cannons. I mean, you can see at the front, they've got, and you can see other places, there are cannons, physical cannons. And, and I just, I love this. It's so advanced, yet so not advanced. You know, and so I think, simple, I think it's funny but... that you said sensor dish or deflector dish. Yes. Going back, harking back to your Star Trek, it's more. I think that's more of a communications array. Yeah. Yes. Thank case. you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I do the same thing. I'm, I'm big, big on Star Trek ships, not so much on other sci-fi. So, it's interesting that this is the first one in this the mission brief Fleet Yards mission briefings that yes. I actually am very familiar. Well, more so familiar with. Mm. Yeah, I've always had a soft spot for this ship. I'm not. I'm not sure why, but I mean, it looked amazing in the movie. The movie's so great, and I like the, I, I suppose, I kind of like the juxtaposition of the shapes, because 
you've got, I mean, in essence, it's a rectangle, right? And you've got a lot of those shapes, but the front is this nice, almost smooth. It gives it a slightly more advanced, feel, slightly more cruise liner feel. Mm -hmm. And yet you've got this, so many dimensions of hull. You know, you've got these outer, inner, recessed, extended, like it, it's all as if it's been thought, as if you know, each segment is, you know, maybe a crane, is maybe a turret, is maybe a, a launcher. Mm -hmm. Everything is very functional. And um, I believe one of the video games or, or the third one or something, you can launch fighters for that middle bit as well. You know, it's very functional. It's very, I just get a really good vibe. I don't know why I just really like the ship. <laughs> and I think the reason you feel that is because, like I said, it kind of it ties in with battleships. If you see a battleship on the yep. horizon, you see those different shapes. You see the see, the command, the bridge yep. tower, the, the communications array, the guns. You see that physical sh stuff. And that's what this one incorporates very well um, because it, you can see purpose what each each section of it is supposed to be doing or what its its, its function is so i'll tell you something embarrassing i when we mentioned it earlier it's sort of like a battleship i only had aircraft carrier in my head and i was thinking it's kind of an aircraft carrier but you're right battleships look exactly like this i'd completely yes. zoned out of that <laughs> battleships destroyers yeah anything with a lot of a lot of punch yes right. So let's go into the next picture. Yes. Um, this shows a great shot of the engines from the. And those engines are massive. <laughs> like yes, this is pure thrust. You know, yeah. just. Uh, and again, fan model disclaimer, everyone. But yeah, it, it really is just. Here is our living quarters. Here is our armory. Lots of armories. Here is our drop ships. Mm -hmm. Here are the engines to get us from A to Z. You know, and there's no maneuverability. I mean, these are capital ships these are not, i mean if you look at the universe of starship troopers um it's fair to say and i hope you'll agree with me there's no ship to ship combat it's orbit because obviously there's no there's no space born bugs you've got to get to the planet you've got to kill mm. the bugs these are not designed for any sort of atmospheric combat or planetary mm. combat it's all drop ship plus base defenses you know yeah i'd be i'd be will i'd definitely go on record saying that this thing couldn't even enter an atmosphere and couldn't sustain atmospheric flight at all. I think it would drop like a stone. <laughs> would, would rip. Yes. I mean, I mean, you look at the. You always say the Constitution class or some naysayers say those nacelles are very, very uh, fragile. But in my opinion, I think the same for these aft pods. I, I feel like they are connected so flimsily compared to the bulk of the rest of the ship that that mm -hmm. they sheared off if they're not working at their normal parameters. You know, it. it I feel like it really is an A to an A to B. You know, one you know, go to your location of ship, but I just something for me interestingly enough it's funny that you mentioned that about the flimsy attachment points because i think i think real world physics and real world logic and thinking would dictate that if there was a problem with one of these engines it would be easily detachable and you could okay. get it away from the rest of the ship if, if it was going to explode let's say mm. you'd still have three engines but i think mm. i think there's probably the the opportunity there or the you know capability there for them to mm. detach um and I think that would be very practical in that mm. kind of instance, because if that exploded, it would be detri like hugely detrimental to the rest of the ship. So, yeah, there's no source of separation in this. There's just oh damn, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, though, it's like a bajillion drop ships. So the whole point of the ship, so you can escape. I mean, yeah. the ship did blow up in the first film, and all of our characters escaped. So, um, now I want to, I want to, while we're on the engines still, there is another shot later on, but I want to hit it now. For the story to work, they have to have faster than light. And FDL, the idea of FDL is different throughout all different franchises. Some similar, but actually pretty, pretty varied. From what you remember about the film, what was the FDL capability, and what do you think is generating that? Like, is it in the aft engines? Is it internal? Is it in a bubble? I mean, what what was your what was your thought about it when you saw the film originally? Didn't have a thought about it, and I, I still don't. I mean, I'm trying to think right now. Um, I remember them. Pulling out and backing up and having the front of the ship almost hit the the Maureen thing and I can't remember them warping in or anything. Well, like it's that. kind of that strange like pull effect, and then, you know, it's kind of like a surge effect, like an um, elastic effect. Almost, yeah, more yeah. like that one. I, I seem to recall. Yeah, my impression um, was kind of wormholey, like they created a little pocket, like a little tunnel, and they because yeah. it, it it this feels like those big engines are propulsing them forward, you know, giving them that jump. And if you've got the sensor or the dish, maybe it's, you know, 
opening up this little tunnel and yeah. poof, forcing itself, or even cracking or crashing through space into subspace. But it feels like it is producing the thrust as opposed to a bubble of subspace like Star Trek. Because those nacelles, mm -hmm. as you've said, I mean, how did Star Trek nacelles work in comparison? Is they're not thrust, are they? No, no. They just generate the work field. Yeah. So this was like I think, thrust to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd agree with that. And I think it's probably safe to say from that description generates a wormhole at some at, at the front of the it ship. Wormholes, yeah. Probably reduces much like Mass Effect ship maybe reduces the mass of the ship so it starts to go into the wormhole. The engines are kind of holding it back and then poof, they punch it and then go right through. Uh, much like a slingshot effect. So mm. I I don't know. Is there technical specs on this ship to find out exactly how it works? Um, Probably. Well, um, if you look at the first movie, they didn't really explain too much. I mean, no. it really was. It was a very sleek film, but it wasn't really... That I've wasn't got, the point. Yeah, I've got the Roughnecks or the... Uh, I love that show. It, I love One of the I animated got, yeah. DVDs upstairs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love the arm um, I love. haven't watched it in forever, but I need to revisit it, I think, because it's very good. So. Next picture... Um, is sort of a, is sort of a bottom view. It gives an interesting feel because it changes the feel for me actually. Yeah, it's much like smoother and more almost more armored maybe at the bottom. It's also thinner than I thought it was going to be based on how the front. Yeah, was. yeah, it is. Um, hmm. Now I got a question. You know those um, bars that go up at the top where the communication yeah. tower is. Looks almost like they're hingeable at that they point. They do, yeah. I wonder if that maybe they fold down and they can actually like grab onto cargo pods or something. Or mm, mm, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe that know. maybe that bottom part because I mean there is at least in this photo there is sort of uh, a line that it, you could pull out. Maybe that's like the ammo. Maybe that's the space gun ammo because obviously how do you maybe, maybe just pull it in bulk or there's supplies next mm. to the food storage. I mean maybe just yeah. I mean I'd totally not sure how. You'd, bring it into the ship but i mean that makes some sense because it's so it just, yeah they look very hingeable there that's it all does. Just, it's odd it looks I'm so functional i'm a but. huge transformers fan and i'm looking at it from that point of view it's like yes. yeah that's a piece that moves when you transform it so well it's such if, if that piece wasn't there just be almost a flat tube it, very basic you know very simple shapes that it feels like it is something i really want to know what it is or like those mm -hmm. two cannons on either side just picking out just sticking out like world war Two or even mm -hmm. modern day aircraft guns um, what I like about this shot is how simple it is. Like the functionality is on the top; it's just it's just been yeah. built on the bottom. And I didn't realize this when I when I rendered. It. I didn't I didn't really pay full attention. I just wanted to get the, the shots out for this sort of analysis. You know, at the top it was very thick, but at the bottom, the engine pod, it suddenly got this thin bottom bit, which then connects in as if that whole thing just can come out, put new engines in. Like that is a separate. That is the engines, that is the mechanicals, that is the engine room, like that is all a set. Then you get into the thicker bit, that's then all the functional crew areas and military areas. Like it's a very distinct operational segments, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I see what you're saying about those engines, but it looks like it only applies to the lower engines, not the, the upper ones so much. Possibly, um, yeah. Because it doesn't have the same kind of step there. Uh, Maybe one set of engines is for sublight drive and the other ones are for the yeah, the FTL. Quite possibly, quite possibly. Because they are they are slightly different design wise. So, yeah. All right, let's go into the next picture. Uh, this is a great shot, actually. I really like this. It almost looks like a a blue whale <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the, with that big lower part. Um, yeah. No, I love this sort of I, detail. That's why I'm doing it 1080 because it's just the detail you can get is just yeah. glorious. I get a very Battlestar Galactica feel from this these kind of ships too. It's like they could fit right in with that fleet because the front is very similar. Mm. It's reminiscent of like the original Battlestar Galactica kind of. Yes, fan. that is that's a good point. Yeah, this is obviously pre you know, the second version. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing I said, I mean, this is a, this this is very different to the other views because there's so much detail here. You know, everything is going on at the front. Each of those doors is where the launch ships come out of. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's very much you come in. Everything comes out. But again, I love the guns. You know, there are guns on the front. There are guns next to the Roger Young 176. You know, the literally aircraft carrier guns. I, mean, I, I love that. I just love that it's so simple. But it, yeah. Um, now, the biggest thing I notice in this shot is the engine pods. They are actually different. And one looks 
I, well, you tell me, what, what do you think looking at those? I was thinking the same thing. The top ones are lit up, the bottom ones aren't. I don't know if that's just an error with the model, maybe. Um, no, I don't think for this, no. But I, th I think my guess, maybe, is that, as I just said, one of them is for sublight travel, the other ones are for the to create the FTL kind of thing. Uh, yeah. That would make sense to me, anyway. Mm hmm yeah, I don't know what you think about that. I, I absolutely, I think yeah, I think the top one is probably the technological because I mean, uh, 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 sublight is just tends to be burning plasma, yeah. or burning fuel, so you don't need advanced elements. But to make a visual distinction, you give the top bit glowing, it has technology. So that's my absolute guess as well. Um, yeah, I agree completely. Although if you look at the uh, the, the bit that you said might hinge, mm -hmm. now you've got a close up. Do you still feel the same? Because I sort of no. I was thinking that as soon as I saw this angle, I'm like, well, now I felt like an idiot for saying that because it looks very much incorporated in there. They're more like towers on each side, um, but uh, and and, and the, the the hinge look for me is the gun at the bottom, so that makes perfect sense because that gun would be able to angle straight down and out, the, out to the side. So, oh, are they um are they, they are they more launch doors at the bottom as well? They are, aren't they? Uh, or... Yeah, it looks like it. Cargo doors, yeah, they're the same door configuration. Oh, that's a lot of, mm. that's a lot of uh, hangar bay doors. Although I think, by the look of, if you look in the middle of the bottom bit, there's a little ball, a big ball, and either side, those are like things that can definitely those things that can move. I wonder what that is. Mm. Yeah, don't know. Uh, we needed to see more Starship Troopers, and we need to see this ship more. You know, it's such a again soft spot for me. Yeah. It'll be interesting to find out how much information is actually available on this ship. Mm -hmm. If you guys know, please comment below with any facts you know about it, because we would love to be very interested in it. So, all right. So the next shot. Ooh, look at that! Some rear-facing guns as well. Those are very battleship-ish. Oh, they really are. Yeah. Um, <sighs> this how is practical. Interesting. Those are there though. Is interesting because well, they're going to shoot off their communications. You know. Well, good, good, good. Good pilots, you know, good good targeters. Now, Stuart, what is this thing? What is this this detail in the middible? What it every part looks like it should be able to slide along, but I don't think it can. What is this meant to be? I'm really confused. I don't get it. I don't either. It's almost like that thing on the top needs room around it. Like it generates some kind of field or something that is dangerous to people because there's no structure in there like it's not filled in and it's kind of on a scaffolding almost. i don't know it's and here i can definitely see it not articulating and moving at all <laughs> so although it does it does almost feel like it can slide along that exactly so it's like a rail but yeah is it is it just a structural thing then because they look like just girders i mean i don't know if there's any space in it i mean it's just literal strength structural integrity i mean that's it's kind of like uh, John Eves did with the Klingon aesthetic for the Enterprise era, mm. adding um, the cables girders and things. Yeah, so maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's just a, a to fill the gap, but also maybe they just need that to structurally link the elements, maybe? I don't know. It's an interesting choice. Because mm. um, it, it almost weakens the ship at that point. If they just extended the hull all the way across that, made it one solid mass, you could fit more crew, more whatever in there. And it would just seem stronger to me. This almost makes it look like it's a it's a weak spot, mm. uh, but it's got to serve a purpose. But I do believe so. this could be from one of the games that there there is maybe a fighter, like actual fighter fighters that just that that rays, and then there's just a space there like for launch. I have that visual I have that visual in my head for some reason. So I think that's mm. what it's meant to be, but not in this version. Um, because there are alternate versions of this ship. Um, in the different mm. movies and, and things, this is just the original version. Um, cool though. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so the I think it's the last picture, last and then we'll reset to the first. This is the after shot. Hmm. Um, definitely different engine designs. Yep, absolutely. What do you think? Uh, first, first thought going through my head is what we already discussed, that those bottom ones are probably the uh, sublight drives. Uh, it's a massive ship and. Looks like a lot of little impulse engines all thrown together. Uh, it does. But the yeah. top ones up uh, at the top are very much different design-wise, shape-wise, size-wise, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm from, at a loss. From what I remember from the film, it there was um, protruding like 
burn, burn, burn like a, a you know a, a fuel burn a, a pointed thing. So I think I think all four are meant to be sublight, but I kind of like the idea of those internal two on the top, and maybe the top two of the other are the FTL. So lots of little mm. FTL drives. Um, so the detailing here, and again, these are just flat blue. This is the fan who's built it. I mean, obviously, we don't know the subtleties of these designs, so this is the where the, the ability to extrapolate really ends. But my guess mm. would be, in fact, that they could be little FTL pieces on top of the big drives, potentially. Like, they're almost drawing power directly from the impulse drives, or sublights, sorry, to power the FTL, and that's where they are. That would be my, I maybe a bit of a stretch there, but um, I like it though. I, lo I love they're different. That's a, such a nice detail. Yeah. They didn't need yeah. to be different. They really didn't, but it, it, it adds something and it's small, but it adds something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to go watch Starship Troopers tonight now for sure. Um, <laughs> so are these circular parts at the bottom in the middle? Are, do you think those are weapons maybe? See, as soon as you said that, I thought, yes. They've, 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 that would make sense to me. I don't sure. Well, why would you have so many rear-facing large weapons ports? You well, they could be missiles. The they could just be missile tubes. But why would you launch those out the back? Unless for well, a retreat, maybe. Well, but. think about it, though. In the in the in the movies, you're not fighting other aircraft, so it's just going to a planet. So mm. all it needs to be is shooting out and down. It's just like dropships. I mean, maybe they got yeah. aft, which we didn't see. Obviously, missiles are self-guided, so. Yeah. <laughs> down i mean then you're launching from all sides maybe maybe i mean a bit of an odd detail maybe they're the sublight and the rest of the ftl maybe they're the ftl somethings um but i i mean i would totally go with missile tubes um why not yeah. exactly uh -huh. mm. yeah <laughs> mm. don't know what else to say about this man yeah. well let's go to back to the first picture which is the Last picture, um, the Roger Young from Soft Troopers. Again, I say, fond of the ship, um, but an odd one uh, for Fleet Yards. Not very alien at all. Probably the most human one we've ever looked at, design-wise. Yet. So far. Yes. 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 And I think, that, I think again, it goes back to the whole battleship feel. You can definitely get that from this. Um, battleships in space. It's like it's like the Yamato it, yeah, <laughs> in the anime. It is. It is <laughs> which bit. is literally a battleship in space. It's the same kind of design, and I think it's cool. It works for a human uh, aesthetic for sh uh, starships, and I think okay. this is probably a natural progression of how our ships will look when we do go into space, or at least a style, like the battleship yeah. in space. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So that's a great closing thought. Then uh, I think that's it for this week's Fleet Yards mission briefing. Your dose of other sci-fi goodness, even if it is mostly. <laughs> A ground combat killing bugs sort of universe but you know what i love this design as well um so if you want to help support this show and get the full episodes with animations guys animations go to patreon and support us there which will help not just fleet yards not just trek yards the whole channel because we are one and the same i think that's it Stuart. Oh, no. i gotta say i gotta say too and as for like regular trek yards mission briefings yep. please put your comments and anything you know about the ship in the yes. comment section below and of course when we do a full episode on it if you know certain facts we use all the comments that you guys leave us uh, to help research the full episode down the road. So that would be much greatly appreciated down there. So, um, yeah, uh, hit, hit the like button, subscribe button. Don't miss out on any new uh, shows from us. Lots to see on this channel. There's a lot of back, a lot of videos. So check them all out. And if you're and, liking uh, these Fleet Yards videos, tell us because we want to yes. do more if you guys enjoy them and watch them. So let us know in the comments below. I think that's it for this week. So until next time, guys, I am Commander Cockings. And I'm Captain Foley. We'll see you next time, guys. Let's go squash some bugs. <laughs> <laughs>